By now, there's quite a few reviews of the new Chevy Blazer. So let's do this one a bit differently. Let's take this stylish crossover on a road trip. This is the 2020 Chevy Blazer RS. Since the RS has the sportiest characteristics of the entire Blazer range, my plan for this trip is to utilize only back roads and no freeways. Is this really the quote Camaro of crossovers? I'm not so sure, but I do know that this is Chevy's attempt to inject some vitality and style into the most boring yet fastest growing car segment today, the two row crossover. Let's see how fun this Blazer really is and explore its practicality. Is this a vehicle that you'd want to live with every day? Let's embark on a tour of some of the finest back roads outside of Los Angeles. Escape the seemingly endless suburban sprawl, get off the beaten path, drive through miles of citrus groves in small towns, and end up on the beautiful Southern California coastline. We could start out this video, like every other video about the Blazer, to complain about the name, but I don't have a problem with it. When this mid-sized car-based crossover first debuted, internet commenters were aghast, furiously typing to express their dismay that the iconic Blazer name would ever adorn such a pedestrian, mainstream soccer dad crossover. Many wanted to see the name used on an off-road, truck-based SUV, like a modern interpretation of the K5. But let's take a moment to remember the Blazer that ran from 1995 through 2005. Sure, it was a decent vehicle, but man, not the prettiest thing. And now, mostly forgotten. Not every vehicle that donned the Blazer name was an icon. So that's why I think using the Blazer name on a car-based crossover isn't nearly as blasphemous as some say it is. The target audience might recognize and appreciate the Blazer name, but they certainly don't care that it's not a 70s throwback truck. They just want to cart their kids around in style. Okay, enough about the name. Let's get into what makes this CUV special. Back to the idea of this being the Camaro of crossovers. So is it? Let's investigate. Yep, that's pretty quick for a crossover, especially if you have the V6 like this RS all-wheel drive does. Zero to 60 in just over six seconds. Having 308 horsepower and 270 pound-feet of torque under the hood is a really nice thing to play around with. There's a slight lag when you mash the throttle, but once it gets going, the nine-speed auto shifts really quickly when accelerating. All right, let's push it a little bit on this windy back road. It might seem a bit strange to take an SUV for a spirited jaunt on a curvy stretch of tarmac, but this Blazer is outfitted with sport dampers and a different steering ratio than other Blazers. So let's put it to the test. In the corners, you'd fully expect a high center of gravity to make you quickly reach for the brake pedal. But the Blazer is surprisingly planted in the twisties. Body roll is minimal, and you can actually feel the torque vectoring at work, which helps motivate the car through these turns. This vehicle isn't exactly fast through this stretch of road, but the composed chassis does inspire a good deal of confidence. So, is it fun? Yeah, I'd say it's a good deal of fun. It feels nimble, especially for a crossover. But like everything, sporty is relative. If you are used to driving sports cars, then this thing is gonna feel huge and cumbersome. But if you're used to driving a Tahoe, this thing's gonna feel like a race car. Chevy did a great job of injecting some fun into this platform. But from a performance driving standpoint, no, this clearly is not the Camaro of crossovers. On a spirited drive, the steering is too light, even in sport mode. The seats aren't nearly supportive enough, sling the car through a tight turn and you'll find yourself bracing the steering wheel to keep you from sliding across the seat. And the transmission just never wants to hold the gears long enough. This crossover is really screaming for battle shifters. But all of that doesn't really matter. People aren't buying blazers for its back road prowess. It's a different type of sportiness that will move the needle. The aggressive looks. It just happens to be an added bonus that the Blazer RS is pretty quick. Perfect for some easygoing back road shenanigans or a spirited trip to your local Target. Speaking of, 
we need some supplies for our road trip. Wouldn't be a road trip without grabbing some supplies now, would it? Cargo space is fine, but it's not the Blazer's strong suit. We've got 30.5 cubic feet with the seats up. The Honda Passport destroys that figure. It has 41.2, but you do get this unique cargo system and a completely flat floor when the seats are folded down. Now, most owners of this new Blazer aren't likely to ever stray too far from pavement. If you do reach an area where the tarmac ends, you might wonder if you'd be better off in one of those old body-on-frame Blazers. But this RS trim comes with all-wheel drive and provides an off-road mode to assist with rough terrain. With just 7.4 inches of ground clearance, you won't ever get too aggressive. This easy dirt road is likely the most anyone will ever ask of the Blazer's off-road capabilities. But it's nice to have this mode here should you want to get off the beaten path for a little bit. So even though this crossover has the Blazer name, it's clearly not a successor to those seriously off-road capable Blazers of the 70s. But if you want to take it off-road, it can do it. Whether you like it or not, crossovers are where the auto industry is headed. CUVs are what manufacturers are pushing in the United States right now. And if you want one of the best looking ones, I'd be hard pressed to choose anything other than the Blazer. It looks fantastic. Like most new cars, it has a massive grille, but it's integrated nicely here. The proportions are near perfect with nice bulges on the hood, and these wheels are totally rad. The dead-on side profile is probably the least unique angle, but from most other views, it clearly benefits from its athletic, low-slung, Camaro-inspired looks. you do get quite a bit of Camaro influence on the interior, especially with these vents that double as rotary selectors for the temperature. Very intuitive and cool looking. One other thing that's similar to the Camaro is rear visibility. Not that great. On the positive side, the leather on the seats is of high quality, and those seats are firm but decently comfortable. You've got lots of features in here, heated and ventilated front seats, heated steering wheel, also power tilt and telescoping, dual zone climate control. This one also has the optional rear camera mirror, which is super cool. Optional wireless charging and USB ports right here with an easy reach. The eight inch infotainment system looks good and works well. Nice clean interface with a dedicated volume knob. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay come with this system, though the built-in navigation is good enough that you don't have to use your phone. The screen is a bit small and feels a touch flimsy compared to the high-end Kia and Hyundai systems, but I can't really find any other faults. Upon close inspection, some of the materials are a bit low rent, like the plastics on the doors and the plastic on the dashboard. And this turn signal stock is super flimsy. The windshield wiper stock is no different. This isn't a cheap car, so you'd expect a bit more attention to detail in some of those areas, 
But overall, this is a pretty nice place to be. So, how's the back seat? It's fine back here. Got the optional heated seats. I've also got two USB ports, an AC port, though I'm 6'3 and the headroom's kind of tight for me. Thanks for the report. No problem. Well, it actually is a pretty decent place to sleep. Could have used a better pillow though. Let's talk price. The base blazer starts at around $29,000. The RS starts at over $42,000. Things like adaptive cruise control, auto braking and lane keep assist, those are not standard features. They all cost extra. As tested, this RS with the Enhanced Convenience and Driver Confidence 2 package, it comes in at $48,370. That's getting into luxury SUV territory. Yes, this RS package looks pretty good, and this vehicle is decently fun to drive. But is it in the same league as the SUVs from Mercedes, BMW, or Lincoln that hover around the same price point? I don't think so. With the RS, you're paying for the aggressive style. You're paying for the fantastic V6 but certainly not luxury. If you opt for the lower end Blazer, the price is certainly way more competitive, but you don't get this sweet V6. Speaking of the V6, with that motor and all wheel drive, gas mileage is 21 miles per gallon combined, which seems a bit low for the class. I've averaged about 19 over the course of this trip, which includes a fair amount of spirited driving. So what do we think of the 2020 Blazer RS? Yes, it's expensive, and there are other higher end vehicles that could be had for the same price or less. But I think Chevy is banking on people wanting to pay a bit more because the Blazer looks better than a lot of other crossovers out there. Ultimately, the reason to choose the Blazer RS is its style and sportiness. The V6 has plenty of power, sounds great, and the better than average handling helps make this a bit more fun to drive than much of its competition. $50,000 is a lot of money for this car. But if it comes down to making a statement and having fun, the Blazer RS might just be the one to have. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what car you think I should review next or places that I should travel to. What do you think of the Blazer RS? Let me know in the comments below. See you later.